right. Okay. Can everyone hear me now? It feels weird. I hate being on mic. Okay, some announcements. So we are here in need of officers for next semester. Some of them are stepping down for graduating, so we need we have three open positions and we'll send out the application link for officer. Um have you sent a CV yet? <laughs> okay, we don't have a due date yet, but we'll come up with one. But um, just apply as soon as possible, or whenever you have time, I guess. And um, we do have fire talks that is in two weeks, so it's the week after spring break. Just kind of to gain interest. How many of you guys are interested in giving a fire talk? Please sign it. Sign up. <laughs> we set the link in the general um, channel, or I hit it somewhere so if you can go to that and sign up thanks and yeah so no meeting, no meeting next week to spring break and the meeting after that is fire talk yeah just that's it and here's the qr code if you want to scan it but everyone good and if you are like the underclassmen who are like not sure if you want to do it or if you don't know what it really is you can't um, you have whole spring break to prepare, and any officers are willing to help you guys. So please sign up for a fire talk. It's a good experience, and you can stream or you can record yourself and then put on your LinkedIn or something. It's gonna be good. look. It's gonna look good on something. Okay, so this talk is on uh, just things that you can use to get started in cybersecurity. We just wanted to do like kind of intro, but like basic talks for you guys because I saw there were a lot of new people this semester. So these are like the general starting point. There are some certifications. By the way, disclaimer, this is kind of based on my own experience and like some research. So I'm not an expert on like every single thing. So if you guys have any like better ideas or better tools or better source, uh, resources, you're welcome to just like interrupt me and then just shout it if you know. Okay, so some certifications. So. Certifications are not a must for you to like do well in security. It's not a must for you to get a job in security. I don't hold any uh, certification. I have an internship, so it's not a must, but it's a good starting point if you aren't sure where to start. Uh, so CompTI Security Plus is like one of the basic ones. I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys have heard about it. So it just teaches you basics of security and the certified ethical ethical hacker so i think they recently or like a couple years ago came out with their practical as well so they have like the multiple choice part where it's kind of like the assessment of vulnerabilities and things like that and then the practical is where you actually kind of are you are tested on like your pen testing skills so yeah so those two are the ones i think maybe a good start for people who are trying to get into security. And the next one is OSVP, Offensive Security Certified, certified Professional. Can never say that right. Um, so that's more for like a high level or like that's more difficult one than like the first two. Brandon, do you mind talking about that? The OSVP? <laughs> Louder. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Well, you can talk louder than me. You have a bigger body than me.
So I didn't end up noticing until I had that and actually putting the container in the UV type of it. Um, so I, I highly recommend you do it. It's not easy. It is rather difficult. It's not supposed to be easy, even though it's their most basic requirement. I did just pass on the first try. It took me about two tries to pass that one. It's, it's, it's hard because of the time. 24 hour exam is very exhausting. The only thing I can tell you is sleep during it. Don't try to get the full 24 hours. You're just going to start throwing brain drains with them. It's not going to help you. It didn't help me across the full 24 hours. But it's pretty good. I will say the only thing is they don't actually give you any direction of the course. They just give you course material and say, have fun. They don't really tell you what you should be doing, what you should be focusing on. Just kind of and yeah, your own pace type of thing. But I mean, if, if you have some extra money and you're wanting to get a certification, you want to do an investment or something like that, go for that. If you don't have the money, do some hack plots, um, or get some experience, and then get them going. You can the company you work for to pay for a CPU or some other certification. Thank you. Yep. And I just threw this one here to CISSP. <laughs> It's more like, I mean, we can't really get it as a college student unless you already have prior work experience. So it's for, meant for people who are, who's been in security field more than like four or five years. And then it's for people, it's meant for people who want to go into management. So if that's what you want to do, that's up there, but it's not really applicable for us right now. That's something new. I didn't know, but <laughs> that's good. So you can't take the test. You just get, won't get it, I guess. Okay, and then next thing I wanted to talk about is Linux. So why I want, why should you learn Linux? So in security, a lot of boxes, a lot of machine servers are based on Linux because it is a free operating system versus like Windows. I mean, of course, a lot of machines are Windows but there is a good chunk of, um, good number of machines that are Linux. And also there are some tools, especially in cybersecurity, some useful tools um, are only available in on, on Linux, Linux operating systems. So it is kind of important to learn Linux. And for me, um, personally, this website was where I learned, first got into learning Linux. How many of you guys know of this site? How many of you guys found this really helpful learning Linux? That's good. Yeah, that's a good number. So I personally found this really um, helpful. So for you to be able to do this, you will have to have either a Linux um, terminal, or you can use. I think the Mac also has terminals, right? You can use that for Mac. And if you have Windows, you can get it with Ubuntu subsystems where you can right click command right here to um, SSH it to their server and you can play with them. So basically what it does um, is there are many goals for each level and you have to pass um, the lowest low, lower levels to go to the upper levels. So level zero is kind of basically, hey, connect into our server, SSH into things. And if you don't know, you can always um, Google their, their keywords, and then there are some things that come up. Try not to Google, you know, bandit level zero, bandit level one, because like they kind of just have a write up of how to do it. I mean, it's good if you really get stuck and you can't figure out, but it's not going to really help you if you try to do that. So each level has a goal. What you're trying to do is you have to find a file where like there's a goal, but in the beginning, there is just files that you have to find and you have to be able to manipulate. Um, not manipulate, but you have to be able to navigate through the system and find each file, and that's where the password for the next level is located, and that's how you use it. I found it really helpful. It teaches you a lot of basics of Linux. And there are a lot of, I don't know if I can go to that, a lot of other levels too, and it does go into more security-related topics as well. So if you Finish the bandit. They do have a recommended recommended order of playing the games. So I think this website will be 
good source for you to learn from. And so the next thing I want to talk about is Kali Linux. So one of the reasons why I, I think people should learn Linux is because it's a Kali Linux. So it's on the um, operating system. I think it's also made and provided by the Offensive Security, right? Yeah. So that's um, so they do have a lot of pen testing tools um, within their operating system. And I'm not going to go too much into detail because Cal will cover that at our next meeting after the fire talk. So it's the first meeting in April. So Cal will go over the tools of Cal and kind of explain and go more in detail. So I'm not going to go much in detail, but that's one of the tools that you should definitely know how to use. And um, for people who want to learn about Linux, I think Ubuntu is one of the wide, I think it is the most widely used um, Linux operating system. That's the first thing I use too. So if you don't want to commit to having Linux operating system as your personal daily user uh, for your daily user, you can definitely get a VM, VMware or VirtualBox and use that and then try to learn. So that way you're, you're not messing up your actual machine, but also you can get Windows Ubuntu subsystem um, that kind of has the same feel, but not really, but I would recommend VM. Or if you're really dedica dedicated to learn, what I did was I just replaced my Windows system with completely with Ubuntu. It kind of forces you to learn. Okay, so in security, if you kind of categorize, there's like offensive security and defensive security. It's not, you can't really like divide them like firmly into two things but I just wanted to kind of categorize them. So one of the things that do fall under is pen testing, uh, fall, fall under offensive security is pen testing. Like uh, OSCP is the pen testing certification. And so for those who don't really know about pen testing, so pen testing is basically kind of testing system or uh, system applications or just any, anything to see if there are any vulnerabilities that people should fix, kind of in a simple term. And one of the best resources that I can recommend, I think, and I think Brandon also recommended earlier, is Hack the Bot. This is how your first input code looks like. It's not easy, and they don't just let you in either. You do have to kind of hack into their system to be able to Practice. But, you know, if you really don't know, I, I'm pretty sure there are a lot of us in CSG who know how to do it and who can kind of pinpoint you to the right direction without giving you kind of giving out the answer. So if you want to look into that, hack the bot, their invite code, try it. And I think, so yeah, I should probably explain that. In hack the box, there are a lot of machines or boxes that you can hack into that you can practice on. Um, your goal is generally to get the ownership of that machine. So you want to be the owner so you can do, execute anything or you can do anything in that machine. That's when you say you own the box or you, you're you in. And this, I just put it here because I use this kind of a lot. I mean, of course, again, if you're doing pen testing and you want to look for certain vulnerabilities or certain uh, vulnerabilities of certain machine or certain system, it's Google is always your friend. You can always Google, but I've personally used this as well. It looks like this. It's CVE. It's a list of all the vulnerabilities or, and it, how you would use for me, I would type Windows 10 and a list of vulnerabilities of Windows 10 come up and then you can probably supply like better their search list, but that's how you would use it. And of course, again, use Google. Google is your friend. We love Google. And I threw it out here too, because in every, every single interview that I've been to that is security related, they've always asked me about this. The OS, how many of you guys know about the OS. Okay, yeah, if you don't know already, it's a good thing to know, especially if you want to go into kind of 
Well, I take that back. Just, it's really nice to know. And a lot of interviewers will ask you if you know about the OASP. And actually, I was recommended in my first interview. You should probably take a look at this. So that's what I did. So basically, they have OASP top 10 guide. And they basically make a list of the most, how do I phrase this? Vulnerable things or attacks. Yes. <laughs> Vulnerable attacks, they make a list, um, and um, they do have a really good guide that talks about each um, vulnerability. And some of the examples, um, you've probably heard it, injection, sql injection, or things like that, and cross-site, yeah. And these are some resources you can learn OASP from. The gist job, if you, how many of you guys have been come here for Paycom workshop. Yeah, they, you, if you guys remember the juice shop that they showed around, that's a really good resource to use. Um, I, this is how their kind of a website looks like. It kind of, on to your right, it has insulation and all that. And honestly, just looking at this, I was really confused at first. Um, but if you Google, obviously, again, like beginner's guide on how to install, like it will just kind of walk you through how to do that. So if you're new, you need that, just Google um, beginner's guide and look and see how you can install. And it basically lets you practice this, um, this web application is this vulnerable on purpose. So you can find a lot of vulnerabilities and try to see what, um, try to learn the OS top 10 uh, vulnerabilities. And this is another one that's provided by OASP again. It's a web goat. It's similar, but it's Java based. So it's another resource you could use. And you can always just Google OASP top 10. And this, they do have a PDF guide that looks like this. And they do have, this is where I got that from, and for, it's a 25 page, and for each vulnerability, they have like much more details explained on each page, and if you go to the end of, end of the guide, it kind of has all these for developers, for testers, for organizations. So th they do have these vulnerabilities, vulnerabilities and explanations of what they are and how to prevent them and kind of suggestions for developers, testers, and organizations and for different people with different interests. So um, I don't want to say you should know this for interview, but you should know this for interview. <laughs> um, they will ask you, and if you know this, because not too many people know about this, surprisingly, that it will give them a good expression if you kind of just at least know what are some top vulnerabilities um, a web application. Okay. And yeah, that's kind of an overview of like the sense of security and their categories. And of course, there are many more tools, but Again, this is kind of based on my experience and some research. And if there are more, and if you know more, please let me know. And so kind of going into defensive security. So incident response does fall into um, fall under defensive security. So usually incident response is done at a security operation center, <coughs> abbreviated into SOC. Um, many companies, many big companies do have their own SOC or they do hire, they hire some other companies to do the monitoring and analysis of their, um, analysis of their network traffic or any, anything that does involve their system and the security. So what falls into incident response is you do monitor traffic that goes in and out of your system and you, if there's any malicious traffic or anything, any malicious file, malicious Code, you do um, do malware analysis, or you do analysis of that traffic, or you do malware analysis. 
And so for any network traffic and network analysis, I actually worked at a SOC over the summer and what I used a lot was Wireshark. And um, we do use, a lot of companies do use SIM software, security information and event management. That's where it, you set some rules, you set you, you as a person, or and then they do also do filter out some well-known or widely known um, malicious traffic or anything that has a footprint of malicious traffic, they will filter that and they will send you alert and you, as a SOC analyst, you will analyze that. And that's what you do. And malware analysis, it's always nice to do it in a VM where there's no internet connection just in case it does anything suspicious to you. And um, part of mal uh, malware analysis, you do a lot of reverse engineering if you do more technical side of the incident response or malware analysis. And for reverse engineering, it's important to know assembly language. And some tools are the Gudra and Ida and binary name Minza. Yeah. And these are all available and uh, for free, except Ida Pro is not. Right? <laughs> yeah. I think they do have a free version too, though. Or do they not? They do. But I don't think their free version is not as nearly good as their Pro. Yeah, um, but the other two, to my knowledge, they're free source. Um, so if you would like to use those, so what they do, they're disassemblers. They take a source code and then they dis disassemble it to usually an assembly language that you are that you will recognize if you know assembly languages. So reverse engineering, if you take the source source code and then you disassemble it and then you analyze it to see what their code is actually doing. And kind of to sum it up, CTF is captured as flag. Anyone doesn't know CTF? What CTF is or haven't heard of it? So if you haven't, this is a security um, competition for so done. And this website has the list of CTF competitions that are going on around the world. And there are things that you can join just to compete or you can form a team with your friends and compete. Um, so you can find any CTF you wanna compete in at any time, usually. And CTF is good for people who want to utilize their skills um, or who want to work through their games. Usually you, kind, usually you play a game and it's a kind of like a goal driven. So it kind of, if, it, if that's something that you want to have, like that motivates you, it's a good good thing to use to practice your skills other outside of, yeah. Okay, hardware stuff. I don't know much about hardware, so I told Lace to cover this part. Do you need the mic? Uh, do I get the bike? Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Hi. <laughs> there we go. All right. Well, compared to all that other stuff, hardware hacking is kind of the wild west. Uh, there's a lot, there's not many certifications. There are certifications, but none of them are really relevant. Um, and a lot more of the uh, the hardware hacking is like specific to what you're doing. So if you're really interested in, in RF hacking, most of that's not really gonna apply to anything else. Um, so anyways, a lot of it you're gonna end up learning on your own. Uh, I, find the best way to do it is just pick something you have available to you and uh, it's specifically routers are really common for hacking so there's just there's a bunch of like free open firmware uh, available for them and so there's things like the OpenWT wiki it shows up there on the page uh, 
um, a lot of times they'll have guides on how to flash your own firmware on there. And depending on which router you choose, some of them will be more involved than others. There's like one specific Linksys router that's super common. You probably know someone with one that is like the best beginner place because there's like 30 different vulnerabilities in it. Um, but past that, I would say take your your, your new toy um, and then just start looking at all these all these numbers here. Uh, so you see like the FCC ID, um, right, like the MAC address will be somewhere in here. Um, you can start going on the line of websites. Refresh this. I think this room never has good Wi Fi. Yeah, I didn't bring my Ethernet adapter. slide this one. super common, you get taken directly to FCCID.io, which is what I had linked. Oh, God. I need to just... Eh, not my laptop. Anyways, that's, this is, this is uh, a link to basically all the FCC uh, information and certifications. Any wireless device is going to have um, FCC certification. All this is public. What? The FCC is the Federal Communications uh, Commission. They uh, regulate pretty much everything that is radio related. Um, so fun fact, like if you hear a radio station, they get the their call sign, which is either like WKX something uh, or K something, something, something. That's for some stupid reason the all the radio stations west of the Mississippi get a K and East get a W. Random fun fact, unrelated to this. But uh, that's all the kind of goodies that you'll get from FCC. Uh, their website kind of sucks. So this this website, FCCID.io, has a lot more 
uh, a lot better search functionality and they kind of you know aggregate every single possible uh, documentation you can want user was PDF pop-up that might be an ad yeah here we go and so you get all kinds of useful stuff like they'll take pictures of the antennas and whatever so if you, if you have no idea what you're doing it's a good starting place um, of course that only applies to wireless devices so if you're looking at something that is not wireless then you're kind of more on your own um, same with the MAC address lookup but past that start opening them up uh, read a bunch of numbers look up data sheets uh, look up the serial number um, again more more numbers here uh, so a lot of times if it's a super common device other people will have already tried to hack it you can go online to different forums um, and find people's methods for for breaking into them uh, so yeah but basically learn by just reading through other people's work uh, there's some other useful tools like Wireshark and Meld they have pretty good forums um, Meld is for doing firmware analysis uh, so let's say for example you have a big binary blob that you have no idea what's going on inside uh, what you could do is take a firmware dump change something take another firmware dump and then see what changed in the binary blob uh, that's a that's a useful resource if you're doing really low level stuff but uh, if you're just trying to learn more go to their, their forums there's lots of nice people there all right did i go back here uh, events, a lot more of the hardware hacking stuff is, I mean, there's a few events, but there's not like online events because it's hardware. You have to have it Ex with the exception of something I'll get go over. Um, but major events like DEF CON, DEF CON has a hardware hacking village. Uh, this is a picture from it. Um, lots of really cool stuff going on there, hacking really like what are supposed to be secure stuff like ATMs and other like cars and other crazy stuff. Uh, Black Hat, same thing. Both of these are kind of uh, out of your, um, out of most of our reach as far as price and location. But I've been recommended, I think it was Brandon, recommended Zero Day All Day. Um, they have a quarterly meet where they basically, it's in Dallas. They have a bunch of hardware. You can bring your own stuff. Just throw it on a table and get firmware dumps. Um, so I don't know when the next one is, but if someone looks it up and you want to go, uh, I'm down to carpool. Um, past that, any, any questions? Well, the oh, next yeah. thing is questions. So for this one, just because I can't know everything, I kind of told Jace and Brandon to come down and help. If you guys have any questions, they are more knowledge knowledgeable than me, to be honest. So just throw any questions at them. <laughs> yeah, if you have any questions or if you don't feel comfortable asking in front of other people, you guys can kind of after the meeting, ask them. I would say they're, they're probably no more things. <laughs> we talked about how you can get Windows 2 on uh, Windows subsystem. Mm -hmm. They also have one for Kali now. They yeah, do? They have Kali, That's really nice. Um, like, what is it? Open system and some other weird one. Is it also like from the way you would get the Ubuntu system? Yeah. From? Well, yeah. But do you want but, but to have kernel. Kali on your like actual machine though? <laughs> <laughs> Whose idea was it? <laughs> okay, yeah. That's good to know. Any questions for them? I used to work at the information security office here. I was the incident response team, and I was a developer and a responder on the team for about a year. Uh, I worked at the Chicago Federal Reserve Bank, working as a cyber threat intelligence analyst there for the summer, doing cyber threat intelligence for the whole financial sector of the United States. Um, I'm currently going to work for CMU Software Engineering Institute, doing intensities of government, stuff like that. I've done a lot of blue teaming, I've done red teaming, I'm more like red teaming than blue teaming, but you know, I've, I've done a little bit of everything here and there, so I have not a little bit. 
things a little bit better where you're in there. Like more more knowledge on the routing and stuff, but That's you can answer like cool. some security keying depending on how sensitive the situation is. I skipped over something really cool. I'm gonna go back to it because <laughs> Uh, we're professionals. This is this is Shodan. Uh, it's basically uh, if you're interested in IoT hacking, um, not that you should, but if you want live test platforms for free, um, it's basically an index of every device on the internet, not just like web websites and stuff. Uh, it's a search engine for literally everything. So if I wanted, for example, um, fun stuff like like uh, security cameras or baby monitors, and just search camera and you know, a lot of times this is going to be super obvious stuff. Like this is very much obviously a honeypot. Uh, who, who, who would guess? But um, you can just go click on something, uh, and they've done a bunch of research. Uh, so it'll show you all the open ports, um, and then like how many of these devices, like with this kind of Mac range, is available. You know, this is run by Verizon. Whatever. Trojan has a really cool um, student uh, student account, so you know you basically get as much as you can want. A lot of times, the free stuff is all you need anyways. But uh, check it out if you're interested. You can look at the end code. Don't actually do anything. Don't touch the machine. Yeah, don't touch. If you were to hypothetically steal a bunch of Malaysian routers, don't do anything. Anymore. Um, yeah, disclaimer: Don't do anything illegal. We're not promoting any illegal <laughs> actions here. Yeah, so don't touch the machines, but don't. As a matter of curiosity, are there any countries that would not extradite an American citizen? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Russia does. Yeah, Russia's, Russia's pretty good for the cyber uh, anarchy. <laughs> there's a few South American countries that don't. I don't know. I think it's like Denmark or something. <laughs> I might as well put your plane ticket now. Cheap. <laughs> <laughs> well, you kind of risk your life, too. Yeah. <laughs> More questions? I trust you. Yeah, that's a good question. Like, we're, like if we wanted to get into, like, uh, like renting and networking, I'd say a good starting point is just learn Linux. That's yeah, I was, I was going to say over the wire. Um, yeah, use over the wire. That's where I started. It's yeah. a good start. I learned similar. Then I, I converted my laptop over to Linux <laughs> in the middle of the semester and missed a few assignments for it. Or is there, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, I just kept my desktop as Windows and I was able to kind of slowly transition and now I have one device that runs anything but Linux. I can share that thing. I probably installed my operating system. Yeah, eventually you, you get really fast at it. So, and hand testing stuff, uh, probably just hack the box most of the time. It's going to be really hard at first because they don't, well, they're not going to teach hand scanning at the director's cell. So, I mean, there's, there's walkthroughs on YouTube of people doing the boxes, there's write ups, there's great resources to figure out how to start. You kind of just have to pick things up too, with that kind of thing. With any type of skill security, you're going to have to do a lot of great work. You learn this, you learn that. For some reason, this connects to that. I don't know what this stuff this does, but it works. <laughs> you know, that's, that's a lot of kind of security works. That's a lot of what pen testing is to just do random. Well, I would say purely random. You try things, and then you go, "Why the hell does this work? I don't know. I'm in. I don't care." And you have to figure out layers. You have to explain to someone, and they're like, "I don't understand how it works." I'm like, "I don't really know either, but it works in high quality." You know, it's you, know, you kind of just play around with it. You, you learn a lot of different techniques because it's a fast moving field because you develop a path and someone finds out how to break it, then you gotta learn how to break it. Then you figure out how to get around the patches and stuff like that to show your there's still one more you need to, to get this type of stuff. It's a lot of cat and mouse kind of catching up and stuff like that. But I mean there's a lot of basic things you can still learn. There's still attacks from nineteen eighty and stuff that still work. Like SQL injection, those were big in the eighties and still gone ran for four still years. The biggest thing still, still number still one. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's there's still common things that people screw up all the time. I mean the most common thing that they will do is in SQL injection, people accidentally write those without intention because most of the time you don't know how to write a proper SQL query. 
angry or they just don't hear well enough. Some people just don't know how to write. They laugh correctly or different. It's a lot of people writing code that don't know how to write code. Um, yeah, most <laughs> most issues with it when it comes to a pen test will probably be user error configuration issues. Just someone set something up stupidly and for some reason that makes it vulnerable. Like they have the UPS software on the machine that they didn't secure and now I have access to the machine because I hacked their UPS system. You know, it's it's there's just weird things that can happen. They wouldn't consider that for some reason you find a way in. That's just kind of how it works. You have to be able to create those in a sense. I mean that's that's for red team. There's a a lot of things that fall under red teaming. Pen testing is one. There's social engineering, so trying to convince people to give them your stuff, which is actually really easy because people are very gullible and don't question things. You mean trusting and nice? <laughs> yes. Yeah. You can do physical penetration testing, like actually break into buildings. They do pay people to do that. You will have to call through them sometimes. That's a good thing. That's a plus. Again, don't do it illegally. <laughs> <laughs> don't do it without permission. <laughs> DHA had to climb up a tree to get on top of a building to get into a supply closet to get inside the building. And they just, they just, you know, that's one way they do that type of stuff, you know. So there's, there's many things you could be on top of phishing campaigns and stuff like that. There's a lot of different things you can do kind of to figure out what seems interesting, where that field kind of falls under, and kind of go towards that. If you're just starting out, I'd say try a little bit of everything. Kind of do so, do some work in here and do some in set response, do some secure code and do some pen testing, do some social media, try a little bit of everything, see what works for you. You'll probably find something that you kind of like. Maybe everything sucks, I don't know. You know, maybe you find something that's terrible enough that makes cool, good money. Everything makes good money. That's... There's a lot of building systems that are built on the Um. <laughs> that's an essential website. Most of the time you can Google like x86 and ARM, you can learn the very basic stuff. The only only reason ARM you could probably go to the actual specification of ARM and probably find most of the stuff. I would very much say probably avoid the x86 specification because there's about five thousand instructions in x86 and I'm gonna say probably eighty percent of them are useless because they're very they're either legacy or specific for some programmer that needs something one day and you just put that in the architecture and everybody forgot about it. It's kind of weird. Um, if I know there's some professors here that are very good. I know Dr. Cole knows x86 really well. Dr. Hamlet is very good at x86. He knows the arm as well. Um, I would, the only thing I would say is pretty much Googling it and then pulling some software compile with that architecture and just running through it and looking at it yourself and kind of figuring out what it does. That's probably the easiest way. Are there any courses that you recommend for new Are there any courses that can really like help with our new system? Anything Dr. Hamlet teaches. Well, he's not going to teach anymore. <laughs> that was just, that's me. Um, so he does teach two classes. One is LDS, which the idea of creating languages in such a way that they're basically here that you can't program vulnerabilities at all in an analysis is a big deal to make buffer overflows because it would check to make sure you did things correctly, you specified enough stuff when you're doing that. That's a great class, I love that one. Uh, it teaches advanced programming languages, so that's just the, the math behind designing a programming language, since programming, programming languages is all math in a sense behind it all. So that was a really hard class. Really want a hard time feel for that, I guess. Um, Those are graduate level. Courses. Yeah, most of most of the ones that we talk about are probably graduate level. There's not really anything to the graduate level there. Be a lot of streaming stuff. There's you have like network security in there. You have you have visual forensics, which is not that great. To be honest. Yeah, I'm taking it now. Oh, and it's more of a joke. Yeah, it's it's That's not good. good. I've like, learned more stuff in here than it is just like in a class. Yeah, that forensic class is going to be more CTF y kind of forensic situations and legitimate scenarios. Because most of them don't try to do all that, you know, janky yeah. hiding stuff when there they're. Is the certificate that you might be drawing to be offered? Like data not to get the certificate? Or 
Gradual is a lot to do. There's air security, the, the application security, then you have like implementation of OS systems, not actually making an operating system, such like that. Language security, advanced programming languages, there's malicious code analysis, uh, analysis the system security and malicious, malicious code analysis. Um, right, I they have like advanced peer networks, which is not like security related, but teach you a lot about how your networks are actually designed nowadays and how satellites are actually done as well. So that's kind of helpful and such like that. Even non-security related classes, you can still take a security view out of it because you can apply just how the general view of a implementation is and then kind of view, okay, how, how do you secure that? How do you put that into a secure mindset and such like that? I mean, you can learn there are some classes here you can get some good information. Most of the security stuff here is going to be kind of eh. Sometimes a lot of stressors are kind of okay or they're great, okay, or shit, to be honest. But, you know, university, you get what you pay for. But a lot of the security stuff you're going to learn out in the wild is just going to be done on your own. If you get an internship, they'll teach you a lot, but they won't teach you everything. They're going to teach you what they do and how they do it, which is always going to be different than how someone else do it because two instant response offices are going to be way different the way they do the different tools they use and everything like that. So download, you just play with different stuff, download everything. You know, if you can at least in an interview say, I've used this before, I don't have much knowledge in it, but I know what it is, that's still a big plus because it's better to teach someone who has a a little bit of knowledge of it than to bring someone who's never seen anything like this before and try to teach them that, at least in an enterprise setting. Everybody tired? <laughs> I was like, I was about to be like, you don't pay anything. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone have any questions? Last call. Okay. You guys should definitely make the most use out of these two guys because they're graduating in like two months, but they know a lot of things. So y'all should direct message them too. <laughs> <laughs> They'll probably be awake. Yeah, no, I definitely <laughs> them at 10 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. You're going to start working. So have like the actual sleep schedule. <laughs> I forget. Um, yeah. All right. If, unless. And if someone has a question, that's all we have today.